The four formulae given here are known as the sum and difference formulae for the sine and cos. These formulae are often told to students, but sometimes they are not proved. In a recording entitled Proof of the Sum and Difference Formulae for Sine and Cos, I proved number two using right angle triangles. The geometry was actually quite complicated. However, once I'd established number two, it was possible to deduce the others, one, three and four, without doing any further geometry. We simply did that by changing the names of the angles in Formula 2. If you need to know more about that, I refer you to that recording. The geometry we did there was actually quite complicated. I'd like to show you here that it is much easier to prove these formulae if we know a little bit about complex numbers. In particular, we need to know Euler's results involving the exponential of an imaginary number. I've written these out below. Euler's result says that cos plus j sine theta is exactly the same as e to the power j theta. Cos theta plus j sine theta is sometimes called cis theta. If we change theta to negative theta, we get the second result here. We can use these two results to very quickly prove the sum and difference formulae for sine and cos. Here's how it works. Instead of j theta in the Euler formula, I'm going to write e to the power j theta plus phi. That's the sum of two angles, just like in the sum and difference formulae 1 to 4. Clearly Euler would tell us that that must be the same as cos of theta plus phi plus j times sine of theta plus phi. Cos and sine of theta plus phi are precisely the left hand sides of equations 1 and 3. So that's a promising start. Now because we're using exponentials we have at our disposal all the lovely properties of exponentials and in particular we can say that e to the j theta plus phi is the same as the product e to the j theta times e to the j phi. But those two separate exponentials can now be written again using Euler's formulae. Cos theta plus j sine theta multiplied by cos phi plus j sine phi. It's easy enough to multiply out those two brackets and we get cos theta cos phi plus j sine theta cos phi plus j cos theta sine phi plus j squared sine theta sine phi. There are four terms there but two of them are purely real and the other two are the imaginary parts. They have j's in. Remember that j squared is negative 1. So we can now collect terms a little bit differently and write this as cos theta cos phi. I'll tick them off as I go. So that's that term there. Then the other real part is the one where j squared has become negative 1. So that's now minus sine theta sine phi and we can tick that one off and now the other two terms have j in so it's plus j into sine theta cos phi and that one is ticked off and then finally the last term is cos theta sine phi and so we can tick off the last one OK. Now remember that these are two alternative expressions for the same exponential. On the one hand we have this expression and on the other hand we have this expression. When we have complex numbers we're perfectly entitled to equate real parts separately and imaginary parts. So that means that in fact cos theta plus phi, the real part in the top expression, 
must be equal to the real part in this second expression. Let's write that out. Cos theta plus phi equals cos theta cos phi minus sine theta sine phi. Isn't that just one of those expressions above? Here it was. Yeah, it's this one. We've proved number three. However, at the same time, we've got the imaginary part of this equation. The part with the sine, at sine theta plus phi, and in the second version, here we've got the sine cos plus cos sine. So that's sine theta cos phi plus cos theta sine phi. And I think we'll find that that is number one of the expressions above. There it is. Sine theta cos phi plus cos theta sine phi. It's in the opposite order, but that doesn't matter. OK. So Euler's result has given us two of these trig uh, sum formulae for the price of one. We've really just done one calculation and ended up with two results. That's very efficient. That demonstrates the power and beauty of complex numbers. Complex numbers carry along two pieces of information at once. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you to prove numbers 2 and 4 this way. What you'll have to do, of course, is to look at the exponential of j times theta minus phi and express that in two different ways. I'll leave that as an exercise. You should be able to get result 2 and result 4.